Okay, just a, an ad here. One week and one day from now, there will be an evening. <laughs> yes, good. It does have it here. February 5 at 6 p.m. in Cougar Center Room 230. There will be a meeting later the Mrs. Advisor for University. Um, <clears throat> chiropractic is something that, well, many of us have gone to. We may or may not have much confidence in them, but it is something that can definitely be useful depending on your situation. It's a, a reasonable career. Over the last, well, starting I think around 20 years ago, they started standardizing things. So anyone who's graduated from chiropractic school within the last 20 years has to have certain training. Before that, it was kind of like, you know, you decide what you wanted. Um, so the I think the negative stereotypes about chiropractors should largely be going away at this point. Albeit, like I said, my mom was severely injured by a chiropractor about four months ago. Um, he, he hurt her neck by turning it too hard. Um, but if you're interested in chiropractic, going to school to become a chiropractor, um, you're encouraged to attend this. I will be trying to remember to throw this ad up here for the week just to keep it in people's minds. And a week from today, I'll actually be asking who wants to go because you notice they will be supplying free food. Yes, that means pizza. And so they want to know how much pizza to buy. So, you know, DJ, if you're going to be coming, I'll just say five. Okay. Yeah, get it covered. Um, I don't know if he eats a lot or not. It's... I do. <laughs> <laughs> He's all that. that was fair. <laughs> all right. Um, and by the way, time is closing for people who are wanting to apply for those research experiences for undergraduates. So do look at those like today if it's something you might be interested in. It's a great experience, pays good money, um, regardless of what you wanna do. One last thing, since I'm on the topic, a lot of people in a class like this are pre-med, and if you're pre-med, it's not the only thing to get you where you might wanna go. You might also consider, you know, if, if you're looking at, like I may not get into medical school, doc, doctor of osteo, osteopathy, a DO. Doctor of osteopathy in the medical environment, like a hospital, they are just called doctors. They do everything a doctor does. So there's no differentiation between a medical doctor and a doctor of osteopathy. The difference in training is the doctor of osteopathy has more training in the skeletal system. So it's kind of like the medical version of a chiropractor. So, you know, my sister says, if you have, you know, problem with like, you know, your back hurting or something, a deal is great to go to because they're trained in that as well as trained in traditional medicine. Okay, enough on that. We should get to transient analysis of circuits today, but we are going to start where we left off with Kirchhoff's laws. And I really apologize for the battery running dead. It should not. I made sure I was on the charge for runs dead today. It means I have a battery problem. So last thing we did last class period was solve this circuit and then introduce Kirchhoff's current law. Uh, go ahead. Is that the lab that we're doing tomorrow not Right, we're going to do Kirchhoff's laws tomorrow in lab. Yeah, that, that is a very important thing to make sure we're clear on. Don't come in prepared for Ohm's law. Come in prepared for Kirchhoff's laws. So we solved this circuit. How did we solve the circuit? We broke it up into a series of parallel. Yes, we broke it up into a series or parallel. And so I first took these that were in parallel. And then once I had identified, ah, oh, those are in parallel, then I took this combination that was in series and combined them. And then I found the current through that, that single resistor. And then I worked my way backward to calculate the voltages and currents through the individual items. Whoops. <laughs> what about this case? How would you approach this? Note the title. Now, there are some things in series. What can you find that's in series? Uh, 
Just just name them. Blurt blurt out. Okay. These are in series. And in fact, I would go ahead and include that. I'd say all of these are in series. Now, the power supply is clearly not a resistor, so we're not going to add it in series, but those are in series. In fact, to make life easy on us, remember last class period, I talked about nodes with Kirchhoff's current law. And I said a node is any place where two elements or more meet. So I could take this and I could say, well, here's a node. That's the node where resistor two and resistor three meet. But then I said, no one talks about those nodes. No one. What we talk about are the things that are called essential nodes. Essential nodes are where three or more things meet. So here's an essential node. Right, resistor one, resistor three, and, and lowercase resistor one, the internal resistance one. All of those meet at that essential node. Now in the picture, it just has a single red dot where it shows the wires meeting. But in your head, keep in mind, the wires are just showing the connection. And so the node is going from resistor one to resistor three. You know, the whole place is where the wires are is the node. So that's an essential node. Those are the kind we use for analysis. Anything that goes between essential nodes is in series. So if I go from here to here via this path, all of these things are in series because there's no alternative, right? Essential nodes are what you need to have an alternative. Likewise, everything from here to here is in series. So technically lowercase r1 and capital R2 are in series as well. There is a power supply between them, but they're all three in series. But there's no way of getting around R1. R1 is not in series or parallel with any single resistor or any combination of resistors because you got those power supplies. So this is not a circuit that you can simplify the way we did last class period. Now I'm going to go through Kirchhoff's laws and then come back to this circuit and have you guys solve it. So first, Kirchhoff's current law, the one I introduced on Friday, says that charge can't be created or destroyed, and nothing in a circuit is storing charge. Remember I brought out, what about capacitors? They don't store charge. They store charge separation. Charge you take off of one side goes to the other, so the net charge on a capacitor is zero. So when we talk about a capacitor's charge, we're not talking about the net charge. We're talking about the charge on one of the two plates. And the other plate should have the opposite sign charge. So the total charge is zero. So if charge can't be created or destroyed, then at any location, the charge coming in has to equal the charge going out. So in this case, we have I1 is coming in, I2 and I3 are going out. So you can write your equation either of this form here, sum of the currents is equal to zero, Choose which direction you want to be positive. So I'm going to just go with Leslie. Do you want in positive or out positive? In. So using Leslie's definition of in is positive, if I take this, I'd say the sum of the currents at node A is equal to I1 is in, so I made that positive. I2 and I3 are out, so I'll make them negative because Leslie said so. And that's equal to zero. If Leslie had said out, the only difference would be I1 would be negative and I2 and I3 would be positive, which is multiplying the entire equation by minus 1, which is no change at all. So that is an equation I can make. The other way of doing it would be sum of the currents in equals sum of the currents out. So in is I1 out is I2 plus I3. And you are all astute enough mathematicians to recognize that this equation and that equation are identical in meaning. So do it whichever way pleases you, whichever way feels comfortable and right. I'm not here to push do it this way. I'm here to push to understand how to do it. So we can make an equation 
for each essential node. Now, when we come back to the actual solution, I'm going to modify that. We can make an equation for each essential node. We're going to use one less. So that's Kirchhoff's current law. Any questions about Kirchhoff's current law? None? Let me back up one step. What is current? Change in charge every time. Okay. It's the charge per second that's flowing. So the reason this is a conservation of charge law is the charge per second coming in is equal to the charge per second going out means that you have no net change in charge. So what law is Kirchhoff's current law restatement of? Okay, Mira was right. I heard lots of answers. Conservation of charge is really all that Kirchhoff's current law is. It's taking conservation of charge, which we talked about already, and applying it to an electric circuit. What does it mean to be an electric circuit? What does it mean to race on a circuit? You go around and you come back to where you start. That's the key. An electric circuit has to start and end at the same place. Now Kirchhoff's voltage law. Kirchhoff's voltage law, we have actually been using it kind of arbitrarily. But Kirchhoff, I, I figure the guy is a super genius because he took two laws that are very straightforward. And he said, this is how we apply them to circuits. And now he's famous for that. So Kirchhoff's voltage law is a restatement of energy cannot be created or destroyed. The first law of thermodynamics. So what that means is if you go around a complete loop and come back to where you started, you might remember me talking about hiking as an example. You start at some elevation and you can treat elevation exactly like you do voltage in a circuit. If you start at some place and you come back to that same place, you better be at the same elevation you started at. If you start in a circuit and you go around the loop and come back to the same starting point, you better be at the same voltage, the same energy for charge. That's Kirchhoff's voltage law. You don't gain energy or lose energy as you go around a circuit. So we have two ways of writing that again. The sum of the voltages on a loop is equal to zero, or the sum of the voltage rises equals the sum of the voltage drops. Now I'm going to go through this, and I'm going to do this in a very dogmatic way. Here is a simple circuit. We could combine three of these resistors in series and be done with it, right? But we're using this for illustrative purposes to make sure we understand it. So the first thing to do, see this blue arrow? The first thing to do is to identify your current. So I made a big loop there for the current. The current's going like this. Everyone good with that? Now, why did I choose that direction? In this case, I know it's correct. Because the larger plate is positive and the Yeah. The larger plate is positive and it should go, current should flow out of positive. So in this case, I know it's correct. In a more complicated circuit, you may not know. One of the circuits you'll be analyzing in lab tomorrow is intentionally chosen so you don't know beforehand which direction the current goes through one of your five resistors. You, I mean, you can go through a bunch of calculations and do it, but by that time, you've already figured everything out. Looking at it, you don't know. So you draw your current the direction you think it goes, and you move on from there. So here I've drawn the current the way I think it goes. And I strongly recommend you go through this process in the way I'm showing. Next, I'm going to show the current for each resistor. And once I've shown it for each resistor, I'm going to mark which side is positive and which side is negative. So let's start with the one on top. Which side is positive for that resistor? The left. How did Trace know the left was the positive side? 
it's a very important point. It's not a trivial point. A resistor always is going to reduce the energy. So that means you're going to start with a higher energy in a lower energy. So the butt end of the arrow is always the positive. The pointy end of the arrow is always the negative. So we go to the, the lower resistor. I got to erase this just so I can read now. Which side is positive for that resistor on bottom? Okay, Trace says the right for the same reason. And finally, for resistor two, which one is positive, top or bottom? The bottom is the positive. Now, you'll note that this circuit has all the voltage already marked, so you could look at those voltages and have known the answers without paying attention to the arrows. But generally, you don't have that. This is way over-specified to try to illustrate a point. So now that we have marked all of those, now I choose a place to start. You can start anywhere you want. You can go any direction you want, but you have to make a closed loop. So by my personal convention, I start at the bottom left-hand corner and make my loop, and I'm going to label this loop one. I make my loop a clockwise loop. That's my own personal convention. I do that every time. That way I don't get confused about signs. And so now I'm going to start some of the voltages on loop one equals. So I start here and I go from here to here. Is that going to be a rise or a fall? If I, if I start at that big blue dot, Going through resistor two, am I going to have the voltage go up or down? down? Down. So I'm going to have a minus sign. Now, in most problems, they don't have the voltages listed for you. You have to use Ohm's law. And so I'm going to get the voltage across that resistor by saying it's the current going through the resistor times resistor two. So that brings me to here. Keep going. Which direction am I going through that power supply? Is the voltage going to go up or down? Going from the negative to the positive now. So that's going to be up. So plus, that's, I put the script E. That's what I tried to put in there, script E, for the EMF. Now I come to this next resistor, which just had R for its label. Is that going to be a rise or a drop? Going from positive to negative or negative to positive? Positive to negative, so that's going down. So that's a drop, so a minus sign. And then finally, I keep going and I get to this one. Going from positive to negative again, it's another drop. Now I'm back to where I start, so I just end by putting equals zero. So here I've e created a loop equation using Kirchhoff's voltage law. Now for this circuit, that was real simple, right? Obviously, we don't use it to solve this kind of circuit. We use it for ones that are more complicated. So the one we started with was slightly more complicated. What law was Kirchhoff's voltage law recapitulating? That's right. Conservation of energy. Huh. So, here is a traditional circuit. I have to give you a few heads up on how to solve it, but then I'm going to have you solve it. Then after you guys have worked on it, then I'll go ahead and, and work it as well. So, step number one. Identify all essential nodes. Step number two.
Mark all current, mark currents through each resistor, then identify positive and negative side of each element. Now let's do this part together. These first two steps. So how many essential nodes do I have in this circuit? I know I already told you this before we looked at the circuit. How many essential nodes do I have? Two. They're marked with red dots and I'm going to label them A and B. So we have names for them to use. Now in terms of currents, we have one current that's going to go through each, we call it a branch. Going from essential node to essential node is called a branch. So I'm going to have one current that goes like this, one current that goes like this, and one current that goes like this. Now you look at that and you say, did he draw the directions for the currents right? What do you think? Why does the middle one go left to right? Yeah, that's my question. OK, the middle one is not going to go left to right. It's going to go right to left. But you know what? That's not a problem. I'm going to leave it this way, just so you can see that it's not a problem in the solution. So I've drawn the loop currents, or excuse me, the currents through each branch. And now I'm going to go to each resistor and say, OK, well, first I should name these. So let's call this I1, this one I2. <laughs> no, I'm going to match the major resistor. That will be I2, this will be I1, this will be I3. And now through each resistor, I'm going to show the current going through it. So following my green I2, what direction is the current going through resistor 2? Options are only up or down. Okay, Trey says it's going up. He's correct. Matching this loop, this current that I drew for I2 going through the branch, it went up at that place. So which side is now positive for R2? The bottom. Okay, what about for R1? Which direction is the current going there? Lowercase r1, thank you for that. From left to right. Okay. Once again, this is I2. Notice these are the same current. They're different resistors, but it's the same current because it's in the same branch there. And likewise, put the plus and minus. Now we go to R1. Well, that one's pretty straightforward. And finally, what direction is the current through lowercase r2? And through capital R3? So I've gone through and done steps one and two. I'm going to erase my green here to keep it from being cluttered. Now comes the bigger portion. Apply Kirchhoff's current law to all but one of the essential nodes. How many essential nodes are in this circuit? Two. So how many Kirchhoff's current law equations am I going to make? One. A real reasonable question is, why all but one? Why not all of them? And the answer is, the last one is going to be a linear combination of all the rest. That is, it won't be new information. In the case of only two essential nodes, it's real obvious. If I make the equation for node A, it's exactly the same as the equation for node B. And so that would just be one equation, not two. If I had four essential nodes, I could make three essential node equations. And then the fourth one would be a combination of the others. So it's always one less 
than the number of essential nodes, which is why it was really important to start by identifying all the essential nodes. Then for step four, apply Kirchhoff's voltage law to all <laughs> meshes. And now you're all, what? That's a new word, a mesh. A mesh is the smallest possible loops you can make. So if you look at this circuit, how many loops can I make? I can make three. I can make a top one, a bottom one, and an outer one. I can only use the number of the smallest loops possible. And so I could use the top one and the bottom one. I could also use the outer one and the top one or the lower one and the outer one. The, the true rule is you have to cover the entire circuit and have the number of loops equal to the number of meshes. To make life easy for you, just say do it for each mesh because that way you will cover the entire circuit and have the right number. Right, so it's, it's not the true rule here, it's a simplifying rule to make sure you don't make errors. So we have two meshes, so you're gonna make two KVL equations. And then the final step, which seems like the hardest step now, but it turns out it's not gonna be so hard, is to solve. Now you're gonna have I as your variable. In this case, how many I's do I have in the circuit? Um, let me re-erase, or I erased the, the green that went with those. And I, for some reason, didn't get I3 written here. So I have three currents, I1, I2, and I3. Why did you draw two I? Because I1 is going through two I1s. <laughs> I, <clears throat> because one went with a green loop. Very <laughs> green, not loop, but a green arrow. So now I want you as a table, and why don't Lydia and, uh, and Michael work together, to come up with your three equations. The outcome of this needs to have the same number of equations as your unknown. You have three unknown currents, you need to have three independent equations. So each table, you gave us that three, the rest have to work together. I want you to come up with those equations. Thank you. 
Well, that's not a mesh. Mesh is a mesh. Mesh has to come back on itself. So. Uh, when you said middle, like, yeah, I'm confused. You have the upper loop that has one, R1, R2, R1, R1, R3, 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 so here's the loop. Yeah. Here's the other loop. Or the mesh, right? You're going to positive and negative all directions are super uh, R1 capital. I guess it's I1. I1. Because it's. Yeah, it's a loop loop. For A, it's positive, B, positive, negative. E, but E has to turn itself. Okay. Yeah. So it's plus minus plus minus. That's what top. I also the bottom one. Okay. So you look at the circle. Here, we identify two essential nodes. So all the ones. All the one means I can choose either A or B. So just randomly choose one. Okay. So, so at node A, then we have to decide, like I asked, the um, so random decision to go less than do we want to consider in positive or out positive? Okay, so in positive. So A, we have I1 is a leader, we have two over here, and we have I3 is so they're all going to be negatives. So I'm going to have the sum of the currents of A is equal to 
minus I1, minus I2, minus I3, yes. Okay. And that's the equation. Now, if you've done it here, if you've done it over B, those are all coming in. Yeah. And so we would have I1 plus I2 plus I3 is equal to zero. Which is the same value. Right. Uh, yes. We drove them on. Okay, now remember, the sum of the currents equals what? Zero. So you need to have equal zero. And how do we label this? Do we say? You put a summation. Yeah, then that's how I do it. I put some of the, I put some of the currents at. Just because I will see it in the equation. So you have no, that's, that's how I do it. I have that right away. Right, it's, it's not I total, it's some of the. Um, and it's always equal to zero. Oh, so so oh, then we can see it. So loop one. Um, which one is loop one? Top or bottom? So starting here. <laughs> that's the way I always do it. Like I said. So that's going to be going plus or minus. So minus I2 times R2. Then this one's going from minus to plus. So plus and yeah, just like there it is. So plus E1 and B. And then going plus E1. So minus the case of R1. That's showing the case of R1. Eventually, it's not for a while. I2. And we get to here, we come back. Now we're going up. Right? So plus I1 capital R. Is there? Right. And then finally this one, starting here, we go up here. Going plus to minus, so minus I1 R1. From here to here is going minus to plus, so plus I3R3. From here to here is going minus to plus, so plus I3, lowercase R2. It's an unfortunate that they reuse indices. <laughs> and then we're going from plus to minus, so minus C2. That's what we're looking for. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You guys have your second question? Yeah. Two, three, three, three. three. No, the third is going to be the curve loss. The curve loss curve loss. So we just do the equations? Um, no, you have three equations and three unknowns, and then we have to solve those. You can do it the long way, you can do it the easy way. We'll try to do this. So you have the curve loss curve loss curve loss curve loss curve loss curve if you stick with my circuit, then that's, that's not right. Well, this is the I don't have this. So, so look at the circuit. So, if you look there, okay, first you choose node A or node A. Node A. And then you choose do I want positive in or positive out? Okay, so look at node A. What's coming in? Nothing. What's going out? Everything being specifically? Well, no, I so Okay, so you're going to have zero equals minus I2 minus I1 minus I3. Sorry, And that's your set of equations now. Assuming I didn't check your other ones. Um, if you remember, they're equal to zero. So, so because, of, because of those are going away, we'll use those usually not drops as um, because these are pointing away from A. So it depends on the negative It drops when it goes out into negative, but it gains. No, no, because we have a curve as well. Okay. And then I chose a different direction. So you guys catch the 
So he wants to do three weeks? No, so he's Okay, so. So, what is the equate? All the time. I showed him three So, what's going into that? So, what's going into that? That's not all negative. Nine. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. Do anyone want to be in it? So, you would have zero people. Yeah, of course. It's supposed to be an option. Oh, they all do the same. Yeah. 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 Because I only have one, but I'm going to like disregard mine because I didn't need something else. No. Yeah. 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 Because there's three variables. So if you combine three equations with three variables, you can solve some here. Okay. You need an equation for every variable. Yeah. So if we had two, we would have variables. We need two equations. All right, five out. So it's like in, in chemistry, it's X and Y. Oh, yeah. Keep going. 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 Is that your fire? Yeah, it's like some beaker or something. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> a lot of these are so fresh. I know. I can't freak out. Still listen to this. Yeah, I want to show you guys. I don't think it's because a part of you enjoys. I like your. Um, you know, I like your. Um, so these are three questions. This one, this one. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry to interrupt with the last group, but I need to move on because we only have seven minutes left. So you should have three equations now, and those equations should be something on the order of this: sum of the currents at node A equals. Most people did it this way. And according to Kirchhoff's current law, the sum of the currents is zero. And then you should have for the loops, some of the voltages on, I'll put loop one, call this one loop one, call this one loop two. So just starting at A, it's going down in voltage. So I'm going to have minus I2 R2 according to Ohm's law. Now I'm going up the EMF1, so plus EMF1, then going from plus to minus, so negative again, I2 lowercase r1. Come on around, get to B, come back this way. I'm going from the negative to the positive. So that means I'm going up I1 r1. Back to where I started, so equals zero. There's the second equation. Some of the voltages on loop two. So I start here again, even though there's nothing until I get to A, going from the positive to negative on R1, so minus I1 R1. Going here, I'm going from negative to positive, so plus I3 R3. Continuing on, I'm going here from negative to positive, so again, plus I3 R lowercase 2, lowercase R2, excuse me. 
Then finally going through this power supply and going from the positive to the negative. So going down back to where I started equals zero. There are my three equations. Now remember I said I is the variable. So there's three variables. There's three equations. Now the last part is all, well, first I have to give you numbers for things that aren't your variables. And so to make life easy, I'm going to set R1 is equal to 10 ohms, R2 is equal to 20 ohms, R3 is equal to 30 ohms, lowercase r1 is equal to 1 ohm, and lowercase r2 is equal to 2 ohms. Right? That way I can remember what they are. Now I sadly have to go to a new page here because I've run out of space. And so on the new page, I'm going to write my three equations again. Rearranging by multiplying by minus 1, I have I1 plus I2 plus I3 equals 0. For the second equation, I have, I'm going to multiply everything by minus 1 and move E1 to the other side of the equal sign. So I'm going to have plus I2 times, notice I have I2 with R2 and R1 here, and then I'm going to have minus I1 with R1. So I'm going to have Oh, and I should have identified the EMFs as well. Oh, let's make it. Make it something a little more interesting. Whoops, those are eyes. So here I've rewritten equation two, putting in my resistances and voltage. Note R2 was 20, lowercase r1 was 1, so 20 plus 1 gave me 21. R1 was 10 ohms, and the minus sign is why I put a minus 10 there. And then for our final equation, we had I was times R1. This time I want my E to be positive, so I'm going to leave the signs the way they are. And then I3 had capital R3 plus R2. Actually, wait a minute, that was one. So there's my equations putting in the numbers. Now the last thing I'm going to do before I solve this, <laughs> well, before I show you how to solve it, is to rewrite these three equations in a very telling form.
So there I have my three equations written out. I have the first column is all I1s, the second column is all I2s, third column is all I3s. Now we go full linear algebra. This is the same as saying It's this is exactly the same set of three equations. And using linear algebra ideas, we can take this and rearrange it using the function that's called RREF, row reduction echelon form. And first I write this matrix I had for the current stuff, and then I just smash on the answers. You put that into your calculator, and it's going to give you something that goes 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, and then has values here. And that's going to be the same as or in other words, 1 times I1 equals this value, so that value is going to be I1. So this right here is going to be I1, this value here is going to be I2, and this value is I3. So that's how you'll quickly solve them in lab tomorrow is by using linear algebra to solve a set of linear equations. Now I know we didn't have time to go over the linear algebra here real quick. You can always use the old school method of trying to combine two equations and eliminate one variable, then combine that with the third equation and eliminate a second variable. That's a lot of work. Doing it the linear algebra way is real quick and simple. So we'll work on doing that in lab tomorrow. In the meantime, have a great day.